thank you everybody for taking the time um, out of their day to give me an opportunity to present scanning a selectical subsection with the VZ400i. We'll be talking about just a quick overview of the VZ400i. Uh, if you guys are new to uh, Regal and haven't heard of us and want to take a closer look at some of our scanners, the VZ400i is our workhorse. Um, of course, there's a there's a scanning workflow that involves with the hardware and also a processing workflow that involves with the data. And then we'll look at third party software um, to extract some features inside um, a complex scene such as an electrical substation. Right. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get moving. Uh, yeah. So quick overview of the VC400i and then we'll look at some detailed information. But yeah, this is a very unique system, 3D cutting edge laser scanning system uh, combined with feature oriented, innovative, new processing architecture and internet connectivity uh, with the latest Regal waveform processing ladder technology. Um, with dual processor uh, on board, the uh, 400i is able to perform different processes in real time, such as automatic onboard registration, also in parallel with uh, data acquisition and image acquisition, right? Um, so this, this scanner is very unique. It's got dual processor. Uh, one of them is dedicated for the scanning and acquisition, and the other uh, processor is dedicated for um, post-processing applications such as registration, colorization, monitoring, um, and a number of things. I'll show you what the apps will look like um, along my presentation. Uh, but the 400i is not just uh, uh, what you see on the shell, right? It's got a lot of internal components that really makes it how it is uh, to really make it a productive system, right? So when we talk about laser scanners, we're no longer talking about, oh yeah, this ladder system you know, produces great point cloud and it's super fast or it's super lightweight. It has to do with productivity, yeah? Uh, scanners are not just, we don't buy a scanner based on the cool factor of a lot of technology anymore. I think we buy it now based on uh, productivity. And that's what we should look at. It's all about productivity for, for, for me, from acquisition to deliverable uh, 3D, the um, register point cloud uh, to the hands of the CAD or the engineers or the designer. It has to be smooth and it has to be productive from start to end. Uh, if you guys already know about us, we have a number of laser scanners um, and ranging meets with accuracy. So that's where, you know, Regal falls into place with a terrestrial scanner. We have the ultimate long range scanners. We also have the ultimate uh, high speed scanner and also the uh, meet a high standard of accuracy and precision. So, yeah, so our I series are the VZ400i and the VZ2000i. And in these two sure scanners has 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 made a good impact in the surveying, engineering, uh, BIM world um, industry. Yeah, and the really only main difference between the two is the four is just the range of capabilities. So the 2000i can shoot up to 2,500 meters, and the 400i can shoot up to 800 meters, um, but yet can also shoot short range too as well as far as a half a meter. Right. So just don't think us as long range. We're a dynamic range. Right. Uh, taking a closer look at the 400i, look at some highlights. Uh, we just talked about 800 meters, five millimeter accuracy. So our ranging is rather uh, uh, dynamic versus linear, right? So we're accurate at close, we're accurate at long distance. Of course, hitting the right surface with the right return, uh, we can be just as accurate long range versus short range. It's high, high pulse laser scanner at 1.2 megahertz, uh, but we're not, a lot of people don't know is that uh, we have variable uh, pulse repetition rate, meaning that we can select one kilohertz or 1,200 kilohertz. Um, and the difference between the two is that uh, it dictates the ranging capabilities. Yeah. So we will use a time of flight technology where uh, we have a three facet spinning mirror that receives and transmits the laser pulse. So in order to capture the return at such range, it's simple. We just slow down the mirror um, so that we can receive the incoming pulse and we time it. It's based on an internal timer so that we compare the incoming pulse with the outgoing pulse. Sorry, the outgoing pulse with the incoming pulse. 
so that uh, we can time it properly. Uh, yeah, although these systems pulse at a high frequency, uh, you really only measure about half a million points per second. Uh, it's because, uh, I, you know, I, I can say we're the data sheet's honest. Uh, the, we only calculate what's in the 100 degrees field of view, right? So when the scanner mirror rotates in back of the housing, those points are lost. So we don't calculate those points. That's why you see the number 500,000 doesn't meet 1.2 megahertz, right? Because we only calculate um, what's in the aperture um, receiving transmission window of 100 degrees. Of course, it rotates 360 degrees. Um, so, uh, but nevertheless, we can also zoom into an area of interest. Uh, and that's what you'll see later on with this particular project I'm going to show you. So stick around. You, you, you'll explain it to you. It'll make perfect sense on 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 where on how we scan 360, but we also scan at an area of interest. Of course, operating with a class one laser, uh, 1.5 micron invisible beam, high accuracy, high precision, uh, based on online waveform processing and multiple time around processing. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what the multiple time around processing is, but it has to do with multiple pulses in the air because the high frequency, right? So uh, well, what that means is that, you know, you'll see this in the past years ago, uh, this problem occurs a lot with airborne system where they fly high altitude, but they got to pulse really fast because they're traveling forward. Yeah. So when you travel, when you pulse really fast, you're going to have this problem with multiple pulses laser in the air. So we have a, uh, the scanner is sophisticated enough so that it can process the multiple pulses in the air uh, in real time. And then, of course, we have full waveform and online waveform processing. So as people have asked me, what's the difference between full waveform and online waveform? All of our VZ scanners are online and our V lines are full waveform. So the difference between the two is online is in real time processing and full waveform is post processing. And full waveform is unlimited returns. Uh, online waveform, we're limited to a certain amount of returns because you know the processors got to find every single incoming pulse and and uh, map where it's supposed to be in space. Uh, so using a Gaussian decomposition bell-shaped uh, map, we compare the outgoing pulse with the incoming pulse, uh, and then based on the timer it takes for the laser to bounce there and come back, we calculate the distance. Yeah. Um, going down the list a little bit, I'll highlight some. Um, um, innovative features that we have. So the automatic onboard registration, once it's enabled, it just it just works. It just continues from one scan position to another. And the cool thing about this is that when you stop the next day, you can just put your scanner at the same position where you left off and continue that registration, right? So whether you're indoor or outdoor, uh, indoor may, may be a little more complex because you lose GPS positioning, but the IMU should be able to uh, map where the last position was. Um, and another Q feature is the simultaneous image and scan data acquisition. I have not seen any system that can take images at the same time as a data acquisition. And it's quite unique because this has to do with the, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, speed, right? And, and speed ultimately uh, equals to productivity. So you're scanning and then you wait and then you take images that gap in that time frame to take images expands the amount of time you use in a day and also reduces the amount of position you can move right so by having the images taken at the same time and those of you that has a 400i that can't do this please contact us and have your scanner updated because this is a new firmware update that has enabled us in the last uh year and a half almost two years so if your scan is 400i uh, was one of the first or second generation that didn't have this firmware update, the firmware update, I believe, are free. Um, as long as your service is up to date, you can also enable this through a firmware. So by having the images taken at the same time as the scan data, you really can move fast and cover a lot of ground in a day. Um, ultimately, that's increased productivity. And of course, cloud connectivity, Wi-Fi, 4G LTE network, these are some of the new, uh, some of the cool features that we have, and it does a lot of things. And we'll be, I'll explain to you how we made use of the um, Wi-Fi or the 4G, uh, 3G LTE network later on on this project. Um, so the scanner, you know, in order to be productive, it's got to be quick, it's got to be fast, it's got to be precise, and 
all the internal sensor makes this scanner so productive because you don't have to level it. It kind of levels itself out. It's got an IMU, dual axle inclination sensor, uh, pause estimation sensor, uh, GPS to give it positioning, uh, digital compass to give it a heading, um, and then the IMU to give it the roll pitch value, right? So we know where we're at, we're leveled, and we have orientation, and that really increased productivity because you can just put the scanner on the tripod and press start and just go. All right, so productivity doesn't just start and stop with the scanner. It continues with the software, okay? Um, our software is called RiseScan Pro, which is the dedicated software for all of our terrestrial scanning. We also have a line of terrestrial software too as well for more um, um, automated features such as, uh, uh, you know, like uh, for example, we have something called RiseSolve, and RiseSolve reduces the amount of um, um, uh, reduces the amount of uh, buttons that you see on there that reduce the amount of icon. And you just follow the steps one, two, three, four, five, or just like right mining, right? So we try to we we, we try to uh, 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 give these type of software to just dedicated industry. But for all the surveyors and all the engineer, everybody should be using RiseScan Pro. And RiseScan Pro uh, is certainly a very robust software that can collect data directly from it, process data, handle imagery, does coordinate transformation, uses a 64-bit architectural, and supports ultra-high definition uh, data, uh, which is great for viewing. And also, so if you, if you haven't seen data on a, 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 a ultra-high definition, you, you, you should definitely get a, a monitor that does because it'll blow your socks off. It very it looks very, very clean and crisp. Uh, also, beyond that, we have tools for filtering too as well. So your data, you know, uh, data can, 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 can look good, but when you filter it, take out the noise, take out the deviation, now you get the quality that your, um, that your scanner can produce. Uh, and this is good for presentation. This is good when you remove the noise and give it to your engineer guy. He can, you know, pick out surfaces, edges uh, very cleanly, very easily. So by having these special deviation, um, sorry, these filtering tools, such as a deviation tool, a reflectance tool, it really helps to deliver a smooth, clean data set. Yeah. So beyond the registration, sorry, beyond the filtering tool, we have automatic registration. And we really try to, 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 to improvise automatic, right? So when we say automatic, we don't want any user interface. Besides the fact that, you know, you got to just push the button, start and let it go. That's what uh, Regal tries to do. They try to, they try to make automatic as automatic as possible, right? Sometimes they say automatic, then you got to put in these values and, 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 and next, right? Um, so RiseScan Pro is just beyond the filter, beyond the automatic registration, uh, beyond the visualization. Uh, it also has tools too as well just as um, comparing voxels. So when you're comparing surfaces from one surface to another for like a mining application or, you've, or, 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 or you're in a construction environment where you are leveling dirt, you get a level of ground, uh, you can really compare using the voxel tools to compare surface change over a period of time or over a period of scans. Uh, volumetric calculation for earthwork. Um, but beyond that, we also have viewers too as well. So the bright panel is a very good, um, uh, excellent viewer that we're constantly updating. And what's great about this viewer is that it's a one-time fee with unlimited updates, okay? So uh, as our viewer is updated online, your, uh, your viewer that you give to your client is also updated because it's an online viewer. You don't need any licensing for your clients. You don't, um, uh, you don't give them the data. You, and, and, and the viewer acts as a, a way to put yourself in the position of a scanner. That's the perspective that you have with right panel. It also allows you to do markups. It allows you to allow to add tags, notes, measurements. Um, and this is a great way to uh, uh, give your client a viewer uh, that puts you in a perspective of the point cloud, of the scene of where you're at. So if, for example, if you're doing out there uh, doing an estimation or, or, or wanna show your clients, uh, hey, you know, this is what we're scanning, uh, you can really put your client's perspective in that view. Or even after the project is done, say, hey, this is what it looks like now. You can really put your clients in that perspective view, okay? All right, moving on. Um, so let's look at the project attributes. So this project was very simple. It was very fast. Um, like I said, we didn't want to do anything too complex. Uh, but we use RTK GPS 
uh, via state-provided VRS network. So now my scanner that I have here at Regal um, USA and my client scanner that he has in his office, it's always set up to that every single time this thing boots on, it's going to recognize an RTK network, either from a base using an R8 or an R10 or a Leica, or if you're using the L1 receiver, it's going to recognize a VRS network because it's always online. Now, you can get it online two ways. You can put a SIM card, a dedicated SIM card. Now, if you're here in the United States, it's got to be a fixed IP address, okay? And once you have that, you know, the cost of it's really low from the quality that you get from the data. Now, you also have to understand that um, uh, GPS is, 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 is it's, it's used but yet ignored. But by having RTK, it only... Uh, makes your registration better. It only makes your registration easier and faster too as well. So if you were to take the same project scanning 50 different position uh, with an L1 receiver with no correction versus with a same scanner, 50 same position with correction, your registration is going to go quicker in, um, during the automatic registration uh, with the um, VRS RTK network. Yeah, because the position is much more accurate so it looks for that position and then it looks for orientation uh, matching the planes uh, with one scan position to another. Um, so ultimately, although you don't make use of the RTK on your final delivery product, but you can make use of it during your registration and, and as such. So 17 scan position, and I'll tell you the values here in a minute. Each scan position, uh, we were you have to do two scans, yeah? So the first scan is a panorama, and this is specifically for uh, scanning an electrical substation, not able to go inside the fence. This is scanning from beyond the fence, right? So you don't have to get permission. You might have to get permission. I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, but this is scanning beyond the fence, right? Um, so therefore, you're going to have a lot of obstruction in the way, like buildings and trees and whatnot. So we take one 360 degree scans at panorama 40 which will cost you about 45 seconds including images at 1200 kilohertz but before we move we also scan an area of interest which is a very easy tool to uh, make use of directly from your phone or ipad you probably don't want to click on the scanner right because it's a static scanning the more fingers you put on it the more um the more chances of having moved so there's no need to touch the scanner at all. You just connect it to your uh, external uh, portable mobile device, and then you select an area with your finger, and then you just reduce the resolution to half the uh, angular degrees, um, and then you have a high-density point cloud um, uh, within that same position, right? And later on, when we use the data, when we give the data, we only give the engineers the um, small area of interest scan which i'll show you here in a little bit it's really cool so stick with me you're going to see this data model and everything um both scanned at 1200 kilohertz now if you look uh at the estimated time 45 seconds for the panorama 40 um sorry panorama 0 0.04 and the other one is 0 0.02 it took you about a minute right but that one minute will save you at the end when we actually try to model it because we have more points on these type of surfaces and when I say these type of surfaces, when you look at an electrical substation, they're very small. Cables, wires, um, uh, isolators, um, and, and such, right? They're, they're smaller objects. So you want a high density and, 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 and smaller step angle so that, you know, you can put these points on top of these uh, objects so that later on you can model it. Now, you can see here, and we did that to every single scan position, right? So you can see here from the top view, this is the 360 degree scan, okay? Now you can see we started at number one, we ended on 17, and we only went to areas that we could go. We did not go inside at all. So just to show you um, that uh, with the capability of the 400, and this scanner was uh, either right at the fence level or below the fence level. So we had a fence in the way, but with the multiple returns capability, uh, this is where you really make use of the multiple returns capability besides scanning areas that have vegetation this is another area where you can make use of the most return capability because of all the um uh, objects behind each object right so i call this a complex scene because you have a lot of objects behind uh, uh other objects so 
with the scanner, you know, the laser keeps on traveling until it hits a solid surface. Uh, so it can return, you know, up to six or eight returns, depending on the measurement pulse. I think at one, I think at uh, 1200 kilohertz, I think the max return is four. And then at 100 kilohertz, um, the max return is 16, I believe. So I could be wrong. I gotta look at the data sheet on that one. But nevertheless, this is besides scanning vegetation, scanning these type of complex scene will give you, will maximize your scanner's capability, uh, especially using the technology multiple returns capability. Um, and here is what it looks like when we scan just the area of interest. So this is what I this is what I would deliver to the client. Um, you know, instead of giving them all the data, all the surrounding, we just give them the small detail scan, which ultimately has a higher point density anyways. And that's what you want to give them when we scan these type of environment because these objects are really small, power lines and such and whatnot. Okay. So yeah, so you can see here, this is the uh, 360 scan. And then uh, since we don't have to register, and plus these 360 scans helps with the registration. So it's always important and it doesn't really take that much time. It's 45 seconds. You get the images and then you also get the full data. It really helps with the registration. In fact, if you were to ask me, I highly recommend you to do a 360 scan and then a small area of interest unless you're using server control. Again, this project was different. It didn't have any server control. All it has is RTK accuracy. All right, so of course, automatic registration. After we scan, which didn't take me any time, right? Probably took about an hour or so to scan all those 17, 17 scan position. Uh, we uh, run the automatic registration. So you import the data. I think everybody knows how to do that. You just drag and drop the whole folder into the viewing area, or you can go to help wizard down and convert. Then we start out doing automatic registration. We pick what kind of scene it is, or you can leave it on automatic, but it's always wise, the best, to pick the type of scene that you have. Uh, yeah, and then you just let us do its thing. Yeah, I've already uh, went over this, uh, one of my webinars uh, last year, uh, MSA plus um, AR2, MSA2 plus AR2, Automatic Registration 2 plus MSA2. Yeah, you can see each scene is unique to itself. Uh, sorry, each setting is unique to itself, based on the type of scene it is because it looks for uh, a, a plain patch filters, right? So if you're in an urban environment, you're gonna have much better planes and hard flat surfaces versus if you're in a non-urban environment. If you guys have not tried this registration tool in a forest environment, it's gonna knock your socks off. It does so well not just in urban, but also in a non-urban, like the woods or the forest, yeah? So give it a try and uh, let me know what you think. Okay, um, and then of course, uh, not only we can apply this automatic, so that's the first step, stitching everything together. We also can do it onboard too as well. So this tool is also capable of doing onboard too as well. Uh, so as you're scanning, this thing will register all to itself. And if you have the 400 i if you take it out, you, if you take your finger and scroll up, Everything in yellow are all custom apps. Everything uh, in the first page are all apps that we made uh, from the factory, but all the yellow apps, they're all custom apps. Uh, as you can see here, these are all the apps that uh, we made. And then in the apps that you don't have, that we have, of course, just give me a shout and I will try my best to um, uh, give you that file so you can just upload to your scanner, okay? Yeah, so instead of doing this next part, we can skip all this part and just do it directly from the scanner, okay? And then after that, we take it into MSA2, which is called the Mobilization Adjustment 2. Of course, there are five steps. You only need to follow these five steps if you're using survey control, okay? If you have points out in the road or out in the streets or out in the area that you want a, re a, a reference to, then you need to use the five steps and you just follow the steps. You, part number one, bring in your fine scans, which is your target. Part number two is bringing in your uh, control. Number three, link them together. Uh, number four, look at it in 3D and expect and review. And then of course, number five, execute the MSA2. But if you are not using server control, just skip to straight number five, okay? So although on this project that we did, did not have any server control, I still went to MSA2 and went straight to number five. And what it does is that once you go to number five, it'll tell you if you wanna make use of the GPS and if you want to exclude outliers 
if you want to put a high emphasis on the survey control, right? So always run MSA2 no matter what, in my opinion. All right, and of course, uh, released last year, um, this new one-touch processing workflow, okay? So this is also, uh, this is pretty new. This has been out for about a year now, almost a year. And um, yeah, we have customers that's making use of it. Um, and what I like about this is that you're not obligated to check every box, okay? Uh, don't feel like you have to check every box. If you don't need to make a, a video rendering, then don't check it. Right? All The more box you check, the more processing is going to do and the more time it's going to take. If you don't need to create a 3D view, don't do it. If you just need an LES file or maybe like an Oxy filter file when you're doing dirt work or, uh, or you know, if you're using a camera, you may insert your camera mounting. Um, but yeah, but what I like about this is that you check what you want and then you press start depending on how large the pro project is. You, you can go get a cup of coffee and come back and be done or maybe 10 cup of coffee and come back, it'll be done. So um, yeah, so pick and choose accordingly and certainly don't have to pick every single one of them, okay? Um, here's a quick tip. In order to make use of the control, bring it in through here, okay? Bring your survey control through the MSA uh, two. Just skip straight to number two and bring in the survey control and then you can close it and then go to this part. Okay, and I have room. I have questions for later. Yeah, all right. So let's look at the 3D point cloud. So what I did was that I isolated the area of interest, which is this tower. It's got three story of um, electrical components, uh, and then this is what we model. Of course, we use a third party software to model. We don't have any model software tools inside of our uh, software. Uh, right scan pro uh, maybe we will in the future but you know our main focus is laser scanners hardware and also how to um, make all the data match where it's supposed to be perfectly and that's really our common goal right there we're not in the cad business but nevertheless our data could be used for third party cad software such as topo dot modeling software uh, this model was created uh, in topo dot uh, using a combination of uh, Microstation tools and also tools that TopoDot has made. Uh, it was a high level detail and it took a couple hours to complete. That's really nothing when when when, when we look at this type of um, if detail information. A couple hours, that's hardly anything to deliver something this uh, complex and this detail. And trust me when I say electrical substation has a lot of details and quite complex. But nevertheless, reach out to TopoDot they have a great modeling software uh, that can really uh, optimize your, uh, uh, your your point cloud and make great use of your point cloud. Uh, they customize tools. Uh, one of the best uh, modeling software I, I, I know of out there for automatic future extraction, uh, semi-automatic future extraction. Um, they, they're really good. And what I like about their engine is that they handle large point cloud and that's really, uh, 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 unspoken for because you know when you're working with with data, this data can get really heavy, and you're working with a large point cloud, and 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 Topo Dot really really handles large point cloud extremely well, better than anything I've seen uh, so far. So yeah, so make sure you reach out to them, and if you want to, guys, want to take a closer look at some of their modeling products. Yeah, and this is the point model without the points. Yep. And of course, this is what you deliver, and ultimately it creates a D, a DNG file, which I have too as well. I can share. Uh, but yeah, so here are some resources within Topo Dot. They have Topo Planner. So if you want to plan your terrestrial mission, your your your, your stop and go scanning mission, you can certainly use this. It opens up a map, and you put your points where it needs to be, your scan position where it needs to be, set up your survey control. You also have Topo Mission for um, mobile um, survey, and they also have cloud storage management. So yeah. Uh, please contact them if you want more information uh, regarding their modeling software and capability. I highly recommend it. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. Of course, this is just many other applications that uh, I've done and, and, and I'll share with you throughout the years. Uh, but yeah, certainly construction survey is something I want to get into. So if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see in a construction survey, we are a partner with a company called DRMP. That's the company that 
uh, constructed our new headquarters. So if you guys don't know out there, we have a brand new headquarters moved in in early December of this year. It's amazing. Anytime you come to Winter Garden, Florida, please stop by, give me a shout, come out and visit us. It's a beautiful facility. It's high tech and uh, you'll love it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll go ahead and open up to some questions. So maybe Andrea is going to help me out with some questions because I always, nope, she's not going to help me out. So I'm on my own. Uh, help me out as in how to um, do it real quick. So let me see. Pull and questions. Okay. Uh, RTK options. Okay. Does all VZ four hundred scanners have an R RTK GPS option? Yes. All VZ four hundred I has an RTK uh, GPS option. Whether you want to use internal or external. If you want to use internal, your scanner must be online either through a SIM card or through a uh, a, a Wi-Fi tethering from uh, your phone. Uh, but you can also always put on an external GPS uh, device. Okay, any other questions? All right. Okay. Um, do you have any more substation example or final product? Um, no, but uh, not at the moment, but I can certainly get more. What exactly are you looking at as far as a final product? Final product to me is a CAD model um, or what I showed you in the last couple of slides from Topo Dot. For me, that's a final product. That's a deliverable product. But uh, yeah, I can certainly share what I have uh, if I get permission to. Um, but uh, yeah, go ahead and reach out to me if I can um, help you with anything else as far as um, giving you my opinion on what's a final product. I missed your comment on the VZ400 update. Could you please? Oh, yes, uh, VZ400i update. Sorry. So the update uh, does a couple of things. One is that if you had the first or second generation, the VZ400i, if you have the firmware update, it allows you to take images at the same times at the scanner, okay? So not the 400, the VZ400i. Uh, maybe you forgot the, the letter I, but only on the I that you can update your scanner with the firmware that allows you to acquire images at the same time as the data. All right, let me see, there's some more question. Okay. Uh, yes, all of our scanners, VZ Porn I does have R2K GPS option, internal and external. Do you need the I model? Yes, you do need the I model. Uh, do you have any more substation data? Uh, no, not at the moment, but contact me and I'll show you what I have. Uh, is it easy to connect an external GPS uh, other than the VZ 400 I is coming with? Yes, it's very easy. There's two factors you need to do. One, configure your uh, external GPS, such as an R8, R10, or like a GS15, 14, 16, to export the proper uh, or the uh, require NEMA stream messages, NEMA messages. So um, there's four messages, GGA, GSA, ZDA, and GST. Those are the four messages that you need to export. And then for on the 400, there's something called a .gnss file. If you contact our support team, they will happily give you that .gnss file, which also has to receive the four NEMA stream messages. Yep, so it's extremely easy to connect an external GNSS device. Can I import already registered scan position project without losing coordinates? Can I import already registered scan positions via MSA to to other projects without losing. Uh, the question is, can I import a uh, register scan position via MSA2 to other projects without losing coordinates? I would have to say yes. I don't exactly understand that, but I would say uh, yes, you can. Uh, as long as your project, um, GeoSys Manager is set up properly. 
So if you want to keep the same coordinate system, make sure your Geosys Manager uh, project, your Ryskin Pro project, the Geosys Manager is has the proper coordinate system. Yeah, but the answer to that is yes. To learn how, yeah, contact us and give us an example and we'll teach you how. Okay. All right. Uh, can the 400 be updated to? No, the 400 cannot be updated to the 400i. The 400 can only be upgraded to the 400i with the uh, X amount of uh, money. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a joke. No, the 400 cannot, unfortunately, can't. Uh, it's got totally different internal hardware uh, and also software, firmware. It's a totally different computer. Uh, so unfortunately not, but we 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 are open to uh, trade in your 400 for a 400 i. In fact, I will honor that after this presentation for sure. And uh, if you give us the model, sorry, if you give us the serial number, we can look at it and give you a a quote on how to update your 400 i. Sorry, your 400 to 400 i. Okay. Uh, what are the motion detected sensitivity level? Uh. I don't know. I uh, I don't know how that is measured. Um, I, I I can't put a metric on it. Sorry, I can't put a value on it. But um, if if we we can look it up, I, I we can look it up and ask our colleagues. Um, uh, what what's that love? But I don't know off the top of my head how is that sensitivity detector measured? Can this sensitivity be disabled? No, it cannot be disabled. Uh, and I'm not sure why you would want to disable it. It's the only thing I can imagine if you want to do mobile scanning, but you know, mobile scanning, converting this thing into a mobile scanner is uh, completely different from what we're talking about today. Uh, but yeah, we you can, and we have a lot of customers that does convert a terrestrial scanner into a mobile scanner, especially the 400 and the 400i. So that's a very neat um, application for sure. Okay, uh, what 400 file can be used in POSPAC and the POSPAC file seems not to be working. POSPAC, okay. POSPAC is a trajectory GPS processing software that does not really have to do anything with the 400. Um, if you put the 400 or the 400i into a mobile mode, uh, the data that's make use is the RXP files, okay? But you can't just process the RXP um, uh, you first have to process the POSPAC file through, um, to, sorry, you first have to process the trajectory through the POSPAC, through, through POSPAC, which creates an SBET file. And then from SBET file, that's what you use to align your data together in the uh, processing software for kinematic or mobile scanning. Uh, so I don't think this, what 400 file can be used in POSPAC um, Seems not to be working. Um, I'm not quite sure. Maybe you can contact us directly and we can give you a better answer. But um, yeah, from my information, no 400 file can be used with POSPAC. The POS, like again, the POSPAC produces a trajectory and the file format for the trajectory is a dot SBET file, is an SBET file. You bring that data SBET file into a mobile software processing software and then it aligns the 400 data to it. So not uh, so I, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Okay. Okay, guys. Hey, that's all the time I have. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope this webinar uh, and this PowerPoint was good. And uh, yep, I was told I got to get off. So I look forward to your feedback and to uh, to hearing back from everybody. Okay. Thank you. And we have a great day.